ratio. We use it in our daily lives, right? When you make lemonade, you remember? You mix sugar, water and lemon in a ratio, correct? How about baking a cake? You have a recipe and you follow a ratio, correct? So we'll talk about ratio today and understand what it really means. At times, when we talk about ratio, we mean really compare numbers. So let me write that. Compare numbers, correct? So, if you make <clears throat> any particular res recipe, then you may add the ingredients in a fixed ratio. 1 is to 2 is to 4 or whatever. Basically, it is the numbers which you are comparing. It could be 1 cup of this, 2 cups of this or 5 cups of that, right? It's just the numbers. So, let's talk about the numbers now and then we'll get into other kinds of ratios, okay? For example, you are comparing the numbers, let us say, number 2 and 6. In what ratio are these? There are many ways to write this, correct? We can write this as 2 over 6. This is what you learned in fractions, correct? 2 over 6, 2 out of 6. Or we can say, yes, 2 out of 6, 2 out of 6. So we can say that also for this ratio, correct? Or we can say just 2 to 6. So that's the way with this colon. When we say like that, it, it is a representation of ratio. This is saying the ratio in fractions. Fractions and this saying the ratio in words. Do you understand? But they all mean the same thing. 2 is to 6 or 2 out of 6 or 2 is to 6. This is 2 over 6. Okay, so this is what ratio of numbers is. Now, you will also see that there is a common factor of 2 here, right? So sometimes we can simplify our ratios, correct? We may say 2 out of 6 is same as 1 out of 3 or 1 over 3 or 1 out of 3. And in ratios, we write it as 1 is to 3. So what did we do here? We just divided everything by 2. If we do that, we get the same ratio, correct? And what these ratios are called? These ratios are called equivalent ratios. They are equal. Equivalent ratios. Do you get it? So, first we have some ratio. Let's say 2 is to 6. We can multiply both 2 and 6 by same number. So if you multiply or divide them by same number, you get equivalent ratio. So here in this case, we divided them and we got 1 is to 3. Let us say we want to multiply them by some number. Let's say now we got 1 is to 3. We can multiply them by 5. And if we do so, what do we get? 5 over 15 or 5 out of 15. Or we can do this times 5. 5 is to 15. How did we get this 5 is to 15 ratio? We times it by 5. Is that okay? So ratios are numbers. And these ratios remain constant if we multiply them by same number or divide them by same number. Do you see appreciate that part? Correct? Yes. Now let's see. Let us say that in your class there are 15 boys and 20 girls. Now, can you tell me what is the ratio of boys to girls in the class? So say boys over girls, boys to girls or we can say boys two girls or we can say boys two girls so we can say in either of these three different ways correct in ratios normally we follow this particular method in fractions you know you follow this method and in words you follow this method is it okay now you understand how to represent a ratio 
ratio is represented by a colon in between. So we'll write boys to girls in a class, right? And this colon represents ratio. This is the way to write ratio. And in our example, what is this equal to? This is equal to 15 boys and 20 girls. So I can write this ratio as 15 is to 20. Do you understand? So this is the way to write ratios. Correct? 15 to 20. Correct? Now, if I say, what is the ratio of number of boys to students in class? What I'm trying to say is, boys to students. Now, how many students are there? Well, there are 15 boys, I'm writing B for boys, and 20 girls. So total is how much? Add them up. So you get 5 and 3, 35. So total students are how much? We'll write here, 35. And total boys are how much? We'll write here, 15. So the ratio of boys to students in this class is 15 is to 35. That is how we see and understand ratios. Do you understand? Now, for you the problem is to find ratio of girls to students. Correct? I think you get it. Do you get it? Girls to students. How many girls are there? 20 girls. And how many students? 35. Therefore, ratio of students to girls is? Well, you know it. So you can write it down. Now here is a small problem for you. And what I'm trying to do here is draw some figure. And this looks like my apples. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Well, these are enough. Let's say we have nine apples, correct? And some of these apples are not really good. They have some insect bites like this. Okay, some of them are not good. They are organic apples, right? We have not been really using any insecticide. So these organic apples, unfortunately, most of them have been bad. So those two dots shows bad apples. Can you tell me what is the ratio of bad to good apples? Okay, try to figure it out. Now what is the ratio of bad to total apples? That's not difficult either, but it helps you to understand the ratio. So you understand now what the ratio means? Ratio means comparing two numbers of same type, but there could be some differences. For example, we are comparing apples, but some are good, some are bad. We are comparing students, where some are girls, some are boys. Like that, we compare using ratios. Correct? Now, in the next video, I will show you what is ratio when we enlarge things, scale them up. You remember? If you have a picture, it can be enlarged in a fixed ratio. So ratio is also used in different ways. So this video helps you to understand what ratio means when we compare numbers. Correct? Look for numbers. And the most important example, which I talked right in the very beginning, was about a recipe. So now make a recipe for your favorite cake and see in what ratios do you add the ingredients. Correct? You can make a ratio, you can use ratio to make a mixture of nuts or something else, whichever you like. Okay, I hope you understand what ratio is and how to work with ratios and how, how useful ratio is in our daily life. Correct? Making cake, making recipes, making mixtures 
and comparing numbers. Correct? Thank you.